The 1930s were a time of great upheaval and change in America. The decade began with the country in the grip of the Great Depression, a devastating economic crisis that left millions of people unemployed and struggling to make ends meet. The New Deal policies of President Franklin D. Roosevelt aimed to provide relief, recovery, and reform, including the creation of jobs programs and social welfare programs. Despite these efforts, the 1930s were marked by social and political tension, including the rise of fascism and the threat of war in Europe. And the Dust Bowl drought in the Midwest also had a devastating impact on farmers and their families. Also during the decade, cultural and artistic movements flourished during this time, including the Harlem Renaissance, which celebrated African-American art, music, and literature. Hollywood produced some of its most iconic films during the decade, and radio became a popular form of entertainment. The 1930s in America were a time of struggle and resilience, marked by both hardship and innovation, as the country worked to overcome its challenges and forge a path forward. The 1930s were a decade of glamour and elegance despite the economic hardships of the Great Depression. Women's fashion was characterized by sleek, form-fitting dresses with long hemlines often made of luxurious fabrics like silk and satin. Makeup trends of the era included bold red lips, arched eyebrows, and sculpted contoured look. Hollywood icons like Joan Crawford and Jean Harlow epitomized the glamorous style of the time with their sleek hairstyles and fur-trimmed gowns. Now on to the dress we are going to make. Okay, welcome to Just Vintage Crochet, and I've got a rather ambitious one for you today. Uh, whether you are making this as a reenactor or a stage performer or just to enjoy the show, thank you. Uh, please like and subscribe if you like this kind of content. Okay, <clears throat> this is called the Columbia, there we go, the Columbia Peggy Tucker Evening Gown. Now, I'm going to assume that Peggy Tucker is the writer of the pattern or it's inspired by somebody she knows named Peggy Tucker. There is no, um, there's no uh, publication source and no author source that that is written anywhere on the pattern. So it's the Peggy Tucker evening gown. Okay, and it also is very, very limited on sizing. It This is written for 34 inch to 36 inch. I'm gonna assume that's bust size. Um, if you need it to be bigger, I'm really not sure how to help you with that other than play around with it, um, figure out the chain count, and try to make it fit you. So they want a, they want you to use a Columbia Chiffon Boussolet 75 to 100 ounce balls, or it's just 75 and then get 100 ounce balls of size 75. That's probably likely it. And um, they don't say what color that is, but I'm going to assume it's some kind of white or cream. And then they want you to get 20 balls of marshmallow pink and a Columbia Steel Crochet Hook Size 3. What I'm using is the Yonky Monkey or Yonky Monkey Worsted Bamboo Cotton. These are 230 yards a piece or 210 meters per little ball. Now this company only sells them in a 10 pack or a five pack, but the good news is a 10 pack is $20 and a five pack is 10. So I don't have quite 10 of these. I have, oh, one, two, three, four, five, six. I have six of these. I'm probably gonna have to buy more. I'll probably buy a five pack, um, but I have six of these. 
and the five pack of this pink one and they do call for marshmallow pink well this is probably a bit brighter than marshmallow pink i'm imagining but it'll work okay and then a three number three steel crochet hook i have here a vintage boy number three steel crochet hook okay so let's get right into the pattern. I've already started the chain. They want you to chain for no matter what size you're trying for of the only two sizes available, chain 185. So chain 185 and then come on back. Oh, let me show you this. Let me show you that. Oh, isn't that stunning? Isn't that stunning? Now I did buy a slip for this, a full, a full size slip on Amazon. Um, it's not all the way floor length though. It's just about halfway down the calf length. They had a floor length one or an ankle length one, but they wanted $245 for it y'all. And that was the only one on all of Amazon that went all the way to like the feet. So it'll work. It will work. But isn't this beautiful? Look at this. And we're going to make the belt. And these are the roses. I'm assuming this is what the pink is for. Those roses. Look at that. Let me show you the back now. And it's got roses that goes all the way down the back. And then there's that belt. Now it calls for a piece of elastic, so I'll have to get that. Okay, guys, let's get into this. Okay, real quick, little pro tip for you. Whenever it comes to vintage crochet, um, whenever I have to work like fillet crochet or something that requires me to do a lot of chains like this, I always crochet two extra or three extra or five extra stitches. The reason being, okay, they want 185, right? I, I started off with 187. That's because sometimes we get distracted while we are making these extremely long chains and we can skip, we can miss count a stitch or two. This way, I don't have to go back and add any extra stitches. And then right here at the end, and I'll show you how to do this, you just unravel two of the chains from this end and there you go, you're good. And therefore you never have to undo your whole chain or undo all of your work just to have the extra one or two chains that you missed. Okay, there you go. Okay, now it wants us to, uh, it says here that this is the waistline that we're starting at. Are you blurry? Is it blurry? Okay, hopefully that cleared it up. Now we will work one double crochet in the fourth chain from the hook. 82 double crochet to end of chain chain three and turn. So that's what we're gonna do. So in the fourth chain from the hook, work a double crochet, start your first double crochet and work a total of 182 double crochet all the way to the end of the chain, then chain three and come on back. I'll go ahead and start this with you. I always work in the back bumps. One, two, three and four. There we go. The only problem I have with this yarn, it can tend to be a bit splitty. There we go. But it's all I had. It's the closest I had to what the pattern calls for. And it that yarn just does not exist anymore. It does on Etsy. I meant to show you guys a photo. I'll go ahead and show that photo real quick right here. I found one seller on Etsy that is selling it. She has like eight, eight balls of it and it's all different colors like no two colors are the same that would not work and it's likely not enough um and she wants like 30 dollars for it plus like 15 shipping and handling and i just can't afford to pay that much money for yarn that i'm not even going to use but here's what it looks like it's a very um shiny this does have a sheen to it it's a very shiny crinkle cut crimped yarn that's very fine here's a photo Now, also on Etsy, I found something similar, very, very similar. It looks like it might be slightly finer, but we, I would make that work. Uh, but the, um, the reviews were not very good. It was uneven, very scratchy and itchy, and fell apart very easily, could break very easily. Here's a photo of that.
So that's why this is what I decided to just go ahead and settle with. Okay, moving right along. Here we go. Oh, I'm so excited. I know it'll be a little while before I have this completely done, just because I'm still working on the other channel too. And I also have things in my life, you know, that I have to do. But um, I'm hoping to have this done in a week for you guys. All right, there we go. I'll meet you guys when we get down to the end. See you then. Okay, so here we are at the end of the row. I counted and I have exactly 182 double crochet. And I do have my two extra chains on the end. And I'm gonna teach you, if you don't already know, how to deal with those. But it's always good to have them many times, you know? Get to the end and the chain count's just not quite right. You don't wanna have to undo your work. So you'll get like a little needle and you will just pull up on the knot kind of loosen everything up. Once you get this knot here loosened up, there it goes and it comes right out. Now when you're undoing chains from the back of your work, you always want to leave one chain to create a new knot or else you will have a funky knot right gnarled up under your stitch. So we will undo one more and you can't pull on them to undo them. That's how you tighten them back up. You have to undo them like this. And then you just, you saw that I had one, one full chain left. Then you just tug on it and there you go. <clears throat> now you have your work all, all ready to go. See there? Okay, moving on to the next row where we are instructed to chain three and turn. One, two, and three. Now we will, I'll use my little needle here. Now we will work one double crochet into the second double crochet. Draw up a loop a quarter inch long, yarn over and draw through long loop. One single crochet in back strand of loop half knot stitch. Oh, half knot, whole knot. Okay, wait a minute. I think these are Solomon's knots or lover's knots. It looks like it might be drawing up a loop a quarter inch long. That's going to be a half knot. So we're working Solomon's knots. Okay. Um, then you will skip two double crochet and one single crochet in each of next two double crochet, repeat from across the row, ending with two double crochet in the last double crochet, chain three and turn. Okay, so we're working Solomon's knot separated by two single crochet. Okay, here we go. So we're gonna do a half knot to start, but well, first we have to work a double crochet into our second double crochet. Now we will make a half, a half knot stitch or a half Solomon's knot. So pull up about a quarter of an inch. That's about a quarter of an inch. Then you will yarn over and pull through the large loop. I, sh I should have, I should show you how to do this right. You're going to want to hold on to everything like this. See how I'm holding on to everything? Pull through. When you pull through, that allows this opening down here. Let me pull up. Well, I tugged on it. When you hold on to everything like I'm doing now, that will allow the back bump, like if we're working on back bumps of the chain, that's what we're gonna work into. We're not gonna work into the, the loops here on the top of our normal chain, normal chain stitch like that. We're not working in these. We're gonna work in the back bump. So let me start that over again. We have our quarter of an inch loop pulled up. Hold on to everything. Pull through your yarn, and you see that we have an opening there. In that opening, work a single crochet. Well, my yarn is kind of getting in the way, isn't it? Pull through 
pull up a loop and work a single crochet and that is a half knot, half Solomon's knot or half lover's knot. Now it wants us to skip the next two double crochet and in the third one over work a single crochet and in the next one after that work a single crochet. Now, if I read that correctly, we do a whole knot. Yeah, repeat from whole knot stitch. Now we're working whole knot stitches to the end. Okay, so a whole knot is going to be drawing up about an inch, about like that much. Yarn over, hold on to everything, of course. Yarn over and pull through. Now I have my opening back here. So you have your two loops. <clears throat> up at the top here, that's the top of your long stitch. And at the back of it here, you have your back stitch, back loop there. Now we work a single crochet into that back loop, just like that. And that is a Solomon's knot. Then we skip two, one, two, and in the third stitch over, we work a single crochet. And then we work a single crochet in the stitch after that. And then we work another Solomon's knot. Pull up a long loop about an inch long. Hold on to everything, as you can see I'm holding. Yarn over and pull through. Then you will come down and work into that stitch right there. This one right here. Well, I can't really, it's hard to show, isn't it? into this that I'm pushing out. There we go. Make a single crochet into that section there. Then you will skip two and in the third and fourth stitch over, work a single crochet and make a Solomon's knot. You will pull up about an inch, hold on to everything, draw up a loop, pull it through, and then into this opening, work a single crochet. Skip two stitches and in the third and fourth stitch, work a single crochet. And that is gonna be our repeat all the way to the end. A Solomon's knot is a lot easier to work with a bit thicker yarn. And this yarn is kind of splitty. I'm not coming up with excuses. Just saying. Let's see here, one and two. One more time. Pull up about an inch. There we go. I'm just going to put my finger in there because that seems to be working pretty good for me allows me to access that easier without my yarn doing this and bending all over the place. Skip two and in stitches three and four, work our single crochet. Okay guys, I will be back when I get down to the end of this row. That is what everything should be looking like. A holy hallelujah of a mess. <laughs> Just coming to the end of the row here, I've worked my last whole knot regular Solomon's knot. Now I'm going to skip two and it says in the last stitch work two double crochet. So that would be our chain here. And in the top of that I'll work two double crochet. Oh, hold on a minute now. <laughs> All these other little strings are kind of a mess, aren't they? You guys wait your turn. Okay, well, <laughs> this is going to be tricky. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to hold it way back and yarn over like this. And I'm just going to go ahead and work this like this. There we go. Now, for one more in the same stitch. You still want to get in the way, huh? Okay. Wow, that is kind of a mess, but this is what your work, oops, I'm trying to pan out a little. This is what everything should be looking like so far. 
here we go now let's look at the pattern okay where are we at okay come on now two double crochet in the last double crochet chain three and turn one double crochet in the second double crochet half knot stitch fasten in center of first whole knot of previous row with two single crochet repeat from here across ending with two double crochet over the two double crochet so one in each double crochet on the end 45 knot stitches away and when they say 45 I'll count of course but I wonder if they mean 45 whole knot or 45 total whole and half well let's let's move on and I'll I'll worry about that at the end of this next row so we chain three Oh, let's get back back down a little closer one two and three we turn and we work double crochet into the second double crochet so the next double crochet over right here now we work the half knot so we will pull up a quarter of an inch and then hold it, of course. Pull through. Oh, this yarn is a little splitty. Then in that, oh gosh. <laughs> okay. Try this again. Now we hold it and then we work our single crochet there half knot done and we anchor it with two single crochet into this Solomon knot so we just go around all three loops and work two single crochet you can see now how splitty this yarn is look at that see how it just likes to fall apart so that's what you will have to contend with with this yarn then we just make another Solomon's knot, a whole knot. So pull up about an inch, hold. And I've been putting my finger in there. With this fine yarn, it's kind of hard to get a hold of, but I found putting my finger into the hole or the loop helps. See, and then I can just, boom, it's opened up for me. I don't have to fight with it. Then grab, make sure that you have all three loops. There we go and work two single crochet around these three loops of the next Solomon knot over. So this is how it should be looking now. Oh, come on you, it's really, really soft yarn. It's very silky. Okay, do one more, pull up. Then into the next Solomon knot over. Make sure I have all three loops and work around them a single crochet, two single crochets, pardon me. Then work another Solomon's knot. Two single crochet into the next one over. One and two, oops. <laughs> it's awful pretty yarn. She does like to split a bit though. Still worth it. I mean, I have been buying this yarn for about five years now. The fact that it splits doesn't deter me at all because in the end, it's so soft and so buttery and silky. It's just simply worth it. It just is. So, okay, we're going to do this for the remainder of this row and then come on back when you're ready for row four. So this is row three. I need to start keeping track of that row one two and three.
Just coming to the end of the row here, we are not gonna work around the half knot. We're just going to yarn over. And I'm gonna hold this back because it likes to get a little jumpy and work my two double crochet. There we go, one. And then in the last chain three at the top, we work one more. Okay, now this is what we have going on. Now let's read on. So, okay, 45 knots, always begin and end each row with two double crochet. Work even for 18 rows of knot stitches or a total of seven inches. Join and work a round skirt without two double crochet at each end of row. So I guess we're going to join at row at the end of row 18. Work even for 18 rows of knot stitches or seven inches. Join and work a round skirt without two double crochet at each end of row for 20 inches even. Okay. Okay, so I was counting from row one on my counter, but I'm going to go ahead and start fresh and work even for 18 rows. Is that 18 more rows or 18 rows total? Oh, that says 20 inches, not 20 rows. Work even for 18 rows of knots or seven inches. Join work, join and work around skirt without two double crochet at each end of row for 20 inches even. See, I'm just, I don't know, am, am I, are we working for a total of 27 inches? or stop at seven inches or 18 rows, join, and then work until 20 inches is complete. That might be it. So I guess we'll try that. If you're watching this, it worked out. <laughs> okay, well, we'll go with that. So then it's work even for 18 rows, 18 more rows or 18 rows total. Work even for 18 rows. Because we've got two rows now. I suppose we'll find out when we get to 20 inches. So I'm going to hit one for the start of my first of 18 rows. So we're going to start the same way every time for 18 rows. And it will be one chain three then one double crochet in the next stitch over. Then we work our half knot. So that is pull up a little bit. And work that single crochet in. Now we work our two single crochet into this first knot, around the first knot. There we go. Next space over. Two single crochet. Okay guys, well, I guess uh, I'll be back. It'll only be a second for you, but it'll be some time for me. I will be back after this meter reads 18 rows. I've reached my seven inches and it turned out to be 18 rows. So I now know for sure, hell of a swatch, right? I now know for sure I've got the right size yarn. It's just not the right texture because the original is very crimped and crinkled. <clears throat> okay, let's look at what we have to do next. I know from 
where we last left off, we're going to join at this point. So work, let me get a little closer so you can see without the shadowing. Well, there's gonna be a little shadowing. Okay, work even for 18 rows of not stitches or seven inches. I came out with both. Uh, join and work around skirt without the two double crochet at each end. So now I'm gonna translate that into, we are now going to begin working in a continuous round. So I already grabbed a stitch marker to mark the end and beginning of each round for me. Uh, for 20 inches, even. So I'm going to say that we're now at seven inches. By the time we reach 20 inches, we're done. I don't believe this is an additional 20 inches. Okay, so that's going to be a lot of rows. That's going to be a lot of rows. This is going to be a lot of homework. So I'm going to have to do this video in multiple parts, like on my main channel, how I have the gloves and the bra in multiple parts. This is going to have to be a multiple part series because this is quite the endeavor. So for 20 inches even, now increase the width of skirt. There are no increases made, but each knot loop is made slightly larger. Work even until skirt measures 29 inches, then start flare as follows. Okay, so I think what we are doing is working, we're probably down to about right here means why would we increase here okay maybe we're probably to about right here actually so we are going to work until it reaches 20 inches stretching now this is not stretched this is stretched so we're probably going to work till about down to here you see how this is already looking a little bit baggier down here and you get that sort of ruffling at the bottom. So I'm guessing we're working from about right here to about right here. And then we will start working the trumpet bottom. Okay. So that's what we are going to do. Join and work around skirt without the two double crochet for 20 inches even. We're, we're just working in the round. Now increase the width of the skirt. There are no increases made but each knot loop is made slightly longer. Work even until skirt measures 29 inches, then start flare as follows. So we'll get into the flare next. This is gonna be quite a bit of homework. So I'm gonna go ahead and join and we'll do that together. And then I'll work a couple of rows with you. And then I'm gonna call this video an end because we have so much homework to do that it will be days before you are ready to come back unless you just you know, work it really really fast and then I'm I'll hold this up so that you can move on this is where it starts and ends so if you want to pause the screen here you can move on if you are faster than me but this is where I'm going to call the end of video one right before we start the flare so Meanwhile, let's go ahead and join because I don't have any instruction on how to do that. So we'll just have to figure it out. Also, I wanted to say, this is what I have. Let's see if I can back out a little more. This is what I have so far. Fold it up. This is to give you an idea of how much yarn we're gonna go through. I'm definitely gonna have to buy another 20, or 10 pack, not a five pack. At first I thought maybe a five, a five pack, no. This is what I have so far. And it took one, almost one whole ball to do it. So I'm definitely going to have to buy another 10 pack. And I'm going to also buy another five pack of the pink. Because I'm afraid that with as big as these roses are, the five balls of pink I have may not be enough. So I'm just going to buy those things ahead. All right, let's go ahead and join. That's enough chit chatting. Let's carry on. Isn't that pretty though? Oh, it's so pretty. Okay. 
So we're gonna bring the two ends together. Bring these two ends together here up at the top, just so I can more easily line them up down here at the bottom. Now, my guess is we're also not going to be making these um, half knots anymore. I can't imagine there would be a reason to. So it genuinely does not tell us how to join. <laughs> we're just gonna figure this out together. I hope that this isn't painful for y'all. Let me get you down in here. Okay, there are the two halves. Let's see, there, now you can see it easier. Here are the two halves. I don't know the best way to do this. I guess I'm just going to go ahead and, I mean, I don't know. Join at the top of this chain three, maybe. Now we're not working. Okay, so I join at the top of the chain three and we're not working the double crochets anymore. So I'm just gonna go ahead. I'm gonna make one slip stitch though. And then create Now I'm just gonna jump over to the first. I'm gonna skip right over the top of this one. I don't know if I'm doing this right. I genuinely do not. I'm skipping over the half knot because, well, we've been skipping over the half knot, so I can't imagine we suddenly need to start working in them. So, yeah, just gonna do that. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put my stitch marker right here. Actually, I don't want it flailing around too much, so I'm going to stick it into the half knot as well. That way it's just a little bit more secure. Okay. And then we just start making our Solomon's knots all the way around. There we go. I hope that's right. I really do. I bet it is. I bet it's going to be fine. That's the beauty. <laughs> Air quotes. The beauty of these vintage patterns. They really let you use your whole brain power to figure them out. They don't really give you a lot of extra detail. They give you just the amount of detail you need to work the stitch. Yeah, it's all right. It keeps us on our toes. It keeps our brains firing, right? We don't we don't need to live in a totally <clears throat> AI type world where everything is thought out for us and all we have to do is act upon pre those, those predetermined thoughts. <laughs> I'm just, I, you know, I'm just talking. I'm just rambling on. Okay, guys, I will be back when I get back around to the beginning of round one of our joined rounds. Okay, just coming back around to the beginning of our first joined round. I'm going to work my last knot of this round. Well, okay. <laughs> now I'm just going to go ahead and join like normal to this one. That's a little long. And before I move on, I'm actually gonna use my purple. I meant to use purple because I'd rather look at purple than orange. <laughs> so where would it go? My guess is this thing is gonna start traveling that way. Because this is my first, or this is technically my first, isn't it? So it'll go here. Because doesn't that make this technically your first knot? Since this is your last knot of the round, jumping over, this makes it my first. Eh, you know, I'm just going to keep crocheting in a spiral until I reach 20 inches. I suppose as long as I keep the stitch marker relatively close 
to the beginning. In fact, I'm just going to keep this orange guy here. It'll be easy for me to look at, an easy reference, and I'm just going to keep building the purple one up, 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 up. And I'm not going to con overly concern myself with which is the first stitch and which is the last stitch, as long as it's generally in this area of the orange one. As it grows longer, I know I'm I'm in the right position. Okay, guys. So I'm going to work one more round, jump on camera, and we'll work that one together. And then that's where I'm going to leave you guys with that homework that we discussed before. Be right back. Okay, coming up to the end of round two of our joined rounds. Go ahead and finish this up with you guys. There we go. Work into the last one. Make one more knot. And I'm gonna work into the, around the knot where the stitch marker is. And I'm gonna move the stitch marker up after I make this next one. Okay, so I'm gonna move the stitch marker up now, just to the space directly above it. Right there, lost my hook. Okay. And we just carry on. Okay, so I will see you guys in the next video. We will pick up right where the instructions at the end of this video left off. So. That is going to be right here. Where are we now? Okay, join and work around the skirt without the two double crochet at the beginning and each end of each row for 20 inches even. Now, time to increase the width of the skirt. There are no increases made, but each knot stitch loop is made slightly larger. Work even until 29 inches, then start the flare. So once you get to 29 inches being short, and I'm going to show you an elongated stitch or what I'm imagining an elongated stitch is going to look like. So be sure that once you reach 20 inches, start working your bigger stitches until 29. Once you're done with your 29th inch, come on back and we will start this portion down here with the flare. So let's work one of their elongated stitches or elongated knots. See, I just worked one in there. Okay, work another one. Now I'm going to imagine it's going to be longer. This is where I've been working them, about like that. Let's come up a little longer. That's quite a bit longer. Yeah, look at that. That's quite a bit longer. So let me Go ahead and make this and measure out what that looks like. Well, there we go. Well, it looks like it's an actual full inch. Nope, nope. We are at about an inch and a half or an inch and a quarter. About an inch and a quarter. So pull your loop up about an inch and a quarter, right there. Okay, that's an inch and a half, inch and a quarter. So we were pulling up inch long loops. Now we're gonna do an inch and a quarter after we reach 20 inches. So from where it measures 20 inches to 29 inches, I would work an inch and a quarter loops. Come on back whenever you are finished when you have achieved 29 inches at the point of your stitch marker. I will see you in the next video. Don't come on back here, come on back to the channel. <laughs> okay, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.